68 years old gentleman uh, with, uh, presented with uh, biliary sepsis and uh, liver abscess uh, some time ago. And uh, CT shows a mildly dilated CBD and pancreatic duct and also uh, some narrowing at the peri and pillary region. So he had an ERCP uh, showing um, two uh, centimeters villus growth at the uh, M pillar. And uh, biopsy shows uh, severe um, uh, dysplasia. So uh, this is the endoscopic and also the CT image. And today we are going to have, to have a U.S. staging and endoscopic ampullectomy. Yes, I am in the stoma. I am checking the liver right now. Uh, when you are trying to see the liver, it is important. Please focus on this. Uh, the frequency is, I changed this uh, F75 Pro Sound Olympus uh, machine is very excellent. We can change the frequency. If you want to see the liver, we need to lower down the frequency. This is the lowest one, 5 megahertz, and uh, we need to increase the range. To increase the range, always we need to lower down the frequency. Now, left side of the liver is visible here, and okay. uh, we can see diaphragm and uh, heart here. This is beating heart here. Yep. This is diaphragm, left lobe of the liver. I will trace uh, uh, for the landmark, uh, uh, portal vein is very important structure. This is a uh, main portal vein. The point is, uh, uh, this is main portal vein. From this is left portal vein. I'm reaching the umbilical portion of left portal vein here. Uh, this is umbilical area. Uh, left lateral, left medial segment will be divided by this line. And uh, also, I will try to look at the uh, uh, liver and also bile duct. Uh, this patient, uh, do you remember the history of this patient? This patient has ampullary lesion. Yes. But before, they checked CT scan, and the CT scan showed some low attenuation lesion in the liver. And uh, over the time when they repeated the CT scan, the lesion was uh, a, a more likely abscess lesion. I think uh, that abscess actually was caused by biliary obstruction downstream in the ampullary area. I so see. we are trying to look at whether there is any remnant abscess in the liver here. Now I'm reaching to the right side of the liver. Uh, this is middle hepatic vein here. Yes. Middle hepatic vein. And the IVC on this line, this is right atrium. IBC and the right atrium area. I will try to find out if there is any suspicious lesion in the right side of the liver. I can increase the penetration depth a little more and we will see the right main portal vein here. This is right main portal vein and uh, this is right main portal vein. This is extra, extra hepatic portal vein. This is right main. This is as segment 8 uh, portal vein going upward to the superior part of the liver. So uh, until now, I cannot see any remnant uh, clearly uh, abscess uh, like lesion. So I will go downstairs to the pancreatic area. This is uh, pancreas. To see that area, we need to increase the frequency like 7.5 megahertz and also reduce the penetration depth like this. Then we can see the pancreatic duct and the splenic vein and the SMV and the portal vein. This is the main pancreatic duct. When we check the dimension, it is uh, 4 millimeter in the body area, a little bit dilated. If we trace this uh, dilated portal vein to the tail, then we can see it. Here we can see two distinct structures, splenic artery and the splenic vein. If you apply e flow, then we can see it the vascular flow clearly inside. The main pancreatic duct does not show any Doppler signal at all. I am rotating my scope to the body and tail area. We are reaching to the tail area now, but still the main pancreatic duct is very much dilated. Normal pancreatic duct does not look like this. Uh, barely visible in normal cases, but even in the tail, the diameter is 4.4 millimeter, which is uh, definitely dilated. And if I try to look at the tail and uh, uh, this area is a uh, splenic hilum area. I'm reaching to the hilum here. Yeah, it shows proportional, uh, proportional dilation, not abrupt dilation. There is no significant structure. And also in the pancreatic parenchyme, 
we cannot appreciate any fibrotic changes or calcification. There is no evidence showing chronic pancreatitis in this case. So the answer for the, this pancreatic duct dilation is not in the pancreatic parenchyme. I can see the downstream of pancreatic duct, it is also dilated here. Yeah. I can see some spotty calcification in the around uh, the duct. Yes, around the pancreatic duct. But pancreatic parenchyme, parenchyme does not show any significant changes. And if you want to see a little more, I will increase the penetration depth like this and uh, decrease the uh, frequency a little bit. And then we will be able to see the dilated uh, extrahepatic bile duct here. This part dilated the uh, extrahepatic duct. This is the main pancreatic duct. It will merge on this area. Uh, that will be the duodenal area. And uh, uh, sometimes it is difficult to, to trace completely down. But even extrahepatic, uh, the intrapancreatic CBD shows the dimension is about uh, how much? 8.8 millimeter, not very much dilated from this uh, view, but we will see. Uh, this area will be the duodenal part, but to see clearly the duodenum, I will uh, go to the duodenum now. I am pushing my scope into the duodenal part. Just a moment. We are looking at the ampullar area. Yeah. Now I, my scope is in the duodenum. Like uh, this uh, maneuver is similar to ERCP maneuver. If you are experienced in ERCP, there will be no problem on inserting the scope into the deep D2 area. This area is deep D2. Can you see the endoscopic view? Uh, yes, yes, yes. A little uh, bit. It, it is not optimal, but we can appreciate some mass lesion in the ampullar area. It seems so, a very big lesion. Yes, yes. Uh, super, uh, upper part of the screen. So I want to insert a little further and then I will try to see those areas, focused on those areas and evaluate. Uh, generally, with a left lateral position, the duodenum catches a lot of air. So we need to do apply suction and also balloon. And this is a linear scope. Some people think that with linear, balloon is not necessary, but my thought is different. Even though it is linear, balloon frequently is very useful. Now we are trying to see the pancreatic area, head area here, superior mesenteric vessel here. So I'm trying to look at the head portion of the pancreas right now. But this, this maneuver, should be very careful because uh, frequently Sorry. the scope tip falls off. So try to touch the pancreas as much as possible and the slow, gentle pulling is generally enough. Now the scope is, tends to move away, but I will, we are looking at the pancreatic parenchyme in the head area, but I think uh, it will show. It's around one local area, it's an uh, unseenless process. Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah, one local area, just telling. Yeah, we can now see. Now we can see the pancreatic duct a little bit. We can appreciate two uh, tubular structure here and here. Uh, I think down there is pancreatic duct. Upper part is uh, CBD. This one would be CBD. Yes. And this one would be pancreatic duct. Down here is main portal vein, I think. If you apply Doppler, I think it will become much more clear. So from here, if I rotate counterclockwise, then we can evaluate the proximal part of the bile duct. But if I rotate clockwise, then we will reach to the down ampullar area. So I will try to trace the ampullar area. Now the lesion becomes a little more distinct. This is a distal part of the CBD. Start from here, distal part of pancreatic duct. Now I, I will uh, use a little bit of zoom to see a little more clearly and they increase the frequency to get better image. This area is suspicious area. This area, this is just the starting point of the mess, I think, uh, this one. This is not the whole mess, but 
Anyway, this area is starting point of ampullary mass here. If I rotate a little bit, a little bit, and uh, apply, uh, I think uh, there is some, there seems to be some infiltration into the distal part of the CBD here. This area is a little bit suspicious. This, this part is far distal CBD, yeah. but seems to be there is some uh, involvement at the distal part. And if I rotate a little bit, then the lesion will become a little larger, I guess, yeah. This is pancreatic duct. Even pancreatic duct shows marked dilation. And also, and also a little bit irregular at the opening, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. And uh, this is CBD. And we are looking at, uh, this is huge mass. This area is huge mass, this part. This part is mass. I'm rotating my scope. But when the axis uh, becomes off, I mean, the tip of my scope is off axis, then the lesion will be visualized on the right side or, or either in the left side. So it is important to keep the scope in, a, in the appropriate position. Uh, this part, we, I, I already off axis now. My scope actually slipped away. So I will try to uh, catch the position again. Mm -hmm. Now. Would you like to do it in a long scope position or short scope position for the ampullary lesion? Uh, either one is OK. But in between, generally in between, I start from long scope position and try to catch the ampullary area and the CBD area and the trace continuously to see the whole lesion. This area is, uh, the, oh, oh sorry, sorry. Uh, this area is huge mass. Can you appreciate this yes. one? Yes. Yeah. This is large mass, this one. Almost three centimeters. Yeah, uh, from, I think uh, if you measure this dimension, this is large. Uh, Michael Burke, the master of uh, ESD and then pilectomy, is waiting for me. <laughs> After this EUS, he will do uh, ampullectomy, but uh, this lesion is a little bit large. <laughs> uh, what is your saw? It's large, but it's not, I can't see it's through the muscularis, hey? It's yeah, this, well, muscularis, uh, is, muscularis is here. Vascularity is still yeah, watched, seems to be in, intact. 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 Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. this year. And even the other thing is, even if it um, extends uh, uh, introductorily, uh, it because we will take the lesion off at the duodenal wall, it's a good chance that we excise it completely. Um, mm -hmm. So we need a. Uh, unfortunately, for some reason, he wasn't able to have an MRCP. But mm -hmm. I think the the three we usually in these patients we get CT, MR and uh, EUS, and, yeah. and, and we, and we, we yeah. look at everything together. Yeah. Do you think intradoctal ultrasound help further? Yeah, e EUS definitely help, but the other uh, thing I is... I mean intradoctal ultrasound. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I no, think no, no. Okay. Uh, the, I okay. mean, just a careful cholangiogram at the time of the ampullectomy mm -hmm. um, is also very helpful, because if we see shouldering or other features, but probably just looking at what I saw endoscopically briefly, mm -hmm. I think it's a benign lesion, and yeah. in our favour is there's not gross biliary dilatation, mm -hmm. and also, um, uh, you know, he hasn't been jaundiced. So, um, mm -hmm. do you so think it can be resected? Uh, clearly, I think uh, this is the lumen between mass and the duodenal wall, this wall. I am compressing this lesion uh, to the duodenal wall. Muscularis is, uh, as you see here, muscularis seems to be very clear. This area is not uh, directly infiltrated by this lesion. So, yes, our master ampullectomy, uh, Michael Burke, can do this. Okay. Uh, is there any question or comment on um, the evaluation of this lesion? Yeah, I think, okay. but uh, after the section, we need to carefully examine the pathologic yeah. specimen. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it gives some cancer focus or uh, if there is no uh, lesion, uh, or, and also resection margin is clear, then I think uh, this case can be treated just by ampullectomy. Yeah. 
Okay, then. Um, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, so can you see the um, ERCP image? Uh, please enlarge the ERCP image a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so you can. For us, so we, be bigger, we've actually please. changed his position. Um, in the brief time you're away, we've moved him to the prone position. And, uh, um, and so now we actually have a better appreciation of the adenoma as well. And it doesn't look, I have to say, it doesn't look as daunting. So we've outlined the pancreas, which is dilated to the level of the papilla screen. Sorry, screen myself. And uh, uh, so it's fine. So yeah. this will be fine to remove. So we come out. Okay. Pull the wire back, pull the wire back, yeah. The wire back. And now we just want to make an assessment of how mobile this lesion is. So we move it around and how far down it extends. So it, it, it extends down onto this fold. Yeah, frenulum so area. The frenulum, but we, we'll remove that later, the longitudinal fold, um, and that will be fine. So then we just have to decide whether we should make an injection into the frenulum. We probably will make a small injection just for safety. And then uh, we come back to the top and we can see that um, it's, it nicely um, extends down with an intramural segment like so. So we will try and uh, capture it up here and, and take it right at the level of the duodenal wall. So, um, so, uh, first, so now we change to the injector please. So would you like to take it in one piece or several pieces? Well, uh, I think we'll aim for one, but it'll be, it'll, I mean, it'll probably be two or three because this frenulum section we cannot remove in the one piece, yeah. at least not all of it. But it, it will be fine. Uh, Mike, one quick question. One yeah. quick question. Yeah. Uh, for you, it, it does not look like daunting, but for beginners still, they think it is daunting task. Yeah. To accomplish this one, this one is very large. Yes. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's a large lesion, so you shouldn't. This shouldn't be your first <laughs> ampullectomy. Right, right. <laughs> Start from the benign-looking yeah, yeah. smaller one first. Yeah, smaller one, and then you work your way up needle out thing. But I think the the endoscopic assessment. So I have the elevator open, and when we're, and then I ask morning to put the needle out. Needle out. Yep. Okay. Good. And now I lift up the needles out. So you must always have the elevator open. We can, we can give some buscopan or glucagon mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Inject a little bit so we make sure there's no air going in. Good. And then we just make an injection here. Inject. Inject. Good. Inject, inject. Sorry, inject. Good, good, good. Inject, keep going. So this is our safety cushion at the bottom. Keep going, inject. And should really just blow up really ever so quickly. Needle back. The needle's still in a bit. Just needle back. Okay, leave, leave it out, leave it out. And then this side we put an injection as well. Inject. Good, needle back. Um, the case will continue uh, here and uh, the lunch is served now. Okay. Uh, you can go to get some lunch if you right. want, and uh, we will continue with the case. Okay. Uh, let's have the snare. Yeah. Uh, the 15, 15 might be enough. If not, we can change to the 20.
先幫你擺飛豬喎。不過唔使你擺飛豬先，我做完我先翻入去嘅呢啲嘢，未做嗰啲唔唔收住。你你啲好抄定係我好抄？我唔知冇人做過我抄。咁我幫你擺起佢先。
Let's try it. So can we don't have a way of testing it? Uh, probably not. Oh, hi. Hi, Paul and Michael. Welcome and back. Yes, welcome yeah. back. So we finished, um, we finished uh, just before Rungson's lecture, which was very timely. Um, and uh, so we had quite a bit of bleeding, and, uh, which is always expected with ampulectomy. And this is a truly uh, laterally spreading tumour. It spread beyond the boundaries of the papilla and sort of down back. The papilla was prolapsed into the duodenum. It grew over the sides and then down and out. So... I think you can see on, on this side, if we just uh, irrigate, you can see that the line of the resection goes way out to the side. And we often use the sphincterotome as a means of injection. You can just impact it and inject directly. It works very well and it, it gives you a high pressure jet for cleaning as well. Uh, so we put a, already put a stent into the pancreas and I think if you look at the ERCP image, you can see the stent in the pancreas. And um, usually we just put a short stent just to facilitate drainage at the level of the papilla and then uh, not beyond the genu. And then um, in this case, you can see everything's been resected except for uh, there's some intraductal extension, which is probably primarily in the bile duct, although the cholangiogram failed to demonstrate it. Um, and uh, so 
Now we, we've got two options. We could remove that now. Um, we could you know, do a sphincterotomy and remove it and then sort of come back. Um, but what I prefer to do, uh, screen myself, advance the wire. Good, good, good. Yeah, good. You see the wire up there? Yeah, good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So what I prefer to do is to do a small sphincterotomy, which I've done, and then just leave a fully covered metal stent for about three months. And um, so the, what we do is we do a plain x-ray in two weeks, make sure the pancreatic stent has dropped out, and then uh, we check the histology on the resected specimen, make sure we res retrieve all the specimen. I'm sure it's just a tubular villus adenoma. Uh, I don't think, well, there's no evidence of cancer based on how we assessed it endoscopically or by EUS. And then uh, in three months we come back, we pull the metal stent out, and we can see straight up the bile duct, and you can really see the extent of the introductal extension, and it's very easily treated with a snare, plus or minus some APC. You can be quite aggressive, and you can put another fully covered stent back in if you're worried about a stenosis or a little bile leak. And then in long-term follow-up, the patient, the patient is cured. So uh, we're just going to put the fully covered metal stent here. So you may want to cross to another room or ask questions or... I think uh, if we put the metal stent there, then uh, probably the pressure will be increased and you will, some portion of tumor can be, I mean, by tu uh, pressure necrosis will be removed yeah, spontaneously. Yeah. And also important that it's fully covered so we can remove it easily. And then the other advantage with these extensive resections is it causes a uh, outward compression of the papillary mechanism and most of the bleeding arises from around the papilla so we find now with this approach that it's infrequent that we have uh, major bleeding after very you know like a complex resection like this or even even much more extensive so I think it's a really good innovation um, particularly if you've performed an aggressive papillectomy because it sort of connects the bile duct to the duodenum if you're worried yeah. that maybe the two have come apart. <laughs> <laughs> so what will you choose for the length of the metallic stand? Pardon? Uh, what, uh, what is the length of the metallic stand? Oh, so you we choose? put a six. Uh, I think if you go for a four, it's a little bit too short. It might migrate. Yeah. We haven't had any migration with the... So we can show the six fully covered wall flex. Um, and... Um, so, and this is a great innovation, being able to put stents that are reliably removable, as demonstrated in the large multi-center trial. Um, you know, this is, this is a real uh, innovation now. Yes, yes. Because, Fully um, covered one, we can remove uh, up to six months after, but after yeah. six months, uh, sometimes the yeah. membrane can disrupt and the metallic mesh can be embedded in yeah. the tissue. So yeah. within six months, I think it's uh, always uh, possible to remove it. Yeah. Michael, do you want to do a full sphincterotomy or a partial sphincterotomy no, I before think you I, Yeah. So I think you've got to be careful to avoid doing a full sphincterotomy um, in these ampulectomy patients because you run the risk, genuine risk, of um, a little retroperitoneal perforation. Oh, so I I th there's no need to do a sphincterotomy, mm -hmm. um, in fact. So you just, uh, we'd, we just do a little one just, just so we can seat the stent more pleasantly and then we have the opportunity to sort of um, uh, pull, pull the, um, you know, have a, a wide open papilla when we come back, so deploy. So now the other thing, just so we just watch the top of the stent open. Okay, that's good. And then we don't have to screen anymore because we're just interested in the bottom end, so. Um, morning and just deploy slowly, slowly, a little bit more slowly, a little bit more slowly. Yes, okay, finish, 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 good. Um, maybe we could have had a little bit more in the duodenum, but I'm sure it's fine. Everything out, yeah, yeah. Um, any other questions? Uh, would you put a pectel inside to prevent the stem migration or? Uh, is, uh, no, not, not necessary. So yeah. in our experience, we haven't got a full sphincterotomy. In our experience, over you know, three or four months, this stent won't migrate. Yes, and already pancreatic duct is spared. So even though there is some pressure, there, but the risk of pancreatic duct obstruction will not be very high. Not very high. Month. And also the pancreatic duct is chronically obstructed. It's oh, yes, dilated. Yes. So um, right. you know, the risk of pancreatitis is also very low. 
Dr. So CEO, do you think there's any use of doing an endoscopic ultrasound after doing an ampullectomy? Should you do an EUS when you're doing ampullectomy? Uh, after the ampullectomy? Uh, no. It's not no, a I, I don't uh, agree with that because uh, ampullectomy itself actually, after long term, uh, after uh, several months later, we can repeat, but at this moment, we cause burn injury, those kind of things. So even though you are doing EUS, there will be some uh, uh, edematous changes, so we cannot evaluate clearly the ductal structure at this moment. But why, why would we, um, no need to do an EUS yes. now. I mean, I'm not sure it would change the management. Um, so, um, any other questions? So we, yeah, we changed you. to a gastroscope to retrieve the specimens. It's a lot easier. Oh, thank you for, yeah. for coming this excellent procedure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much.